Hey, what's up? In this video will be another iteration of Z-Pinch experiments. So you know when you have plasma in a magnetic field, you get the spiral of plasma that spirals all the way up to each from the anode to the cathode. Well, I like to demonstrate that using the plasma itself and have the magnetic field of the plasma generate the rings. And I will do this by using four microwave transformers in series. And that will create enough high voltage to have the plasma inside the chamber. So by doing this, I realized that high voltage transformers run off of AC and uh, that's undesirable. So what I ended up doing was just running with it. I hooked it up to a full bridge rectifier up to these capacitors and I get these high voltage pulses. This actually looks pretty interesting just to look at, but this is not really what I was looking for. Um, I've changed the frame rate and the exposure time, and it really didn't do anything to help me uh, discover the new rings. And I've done this long enough to where the uh, I used hot glue to seal the vacuum chamber, and um, having the plasma in there actually melted the the hot glue, so I had to redo that. I used JB Weld and everything worked out fine. I got a good seal, a nice little beam of plasma, and ready to continue on with my uh, experiments. So I abandoned the idea of using the microwave transformers and I used the 30 kilovolt power supply I created and I did the same thing. I hooked those up to the capacitors. So the results from changing the power supplies, uh, this looks promising. I get the plasma beam that I like, and I'm running with this. I'm just going through each one. Um, each iteration is using different exposure times from the camera, trying to get the best, to get the clearest image of the rings. And I'm going in slow motion. I'm using my high-speed camera to get each pulse. The problem with my high-speed camera is it's really cheap. The uh, camera scanning rate is not able to pick up the entire beam at once. So you're going to sometimes see the full image. Sometimes you're going to see uh, half of the image black and sometimes you're going to see everything else. So Now I'm changing the pressure inside the chamber to see what the effects would be and Pulses get shorter and it does get a lot brighter as well because you're getting a lot more energy out of each pulse now. And you're getting the nitrogen and all the other uh, molecules in the air that are interacting with the plasma and changing the color. So I'm turning the vacuum chamber back on and you get to see the effects of the plasma beam in reverse. I'm going to the high speed don't get to see much. Um, so I've looked through all the data and I have found the best image that gets the desired results and looks freaking amazing. Like I get, you get the plasma with the uh, plasma rings around it showing that the plasma is creating its own magnetic field and the plasma around it is interacting with that magnetic field. So with that enthusiasm, I decided to go with my higher capacitor banks and I used the, starting with the, the smallest one. And hooked it up the same way as I took the microwave transformers capacitors. And well, this capacitor bank has way too much energy. Even though it's the smallest one I have, it doesn't really show anything other than just a bright flash and a small explosion. I'm not sure if it's my camera that's not able to see it, or should I have a higher frame rate, or would a better camera be able to pick this up? I don't know, but I'm not sure if it's worth going into unless somebody wants to donate a high-speed camera. Just kidding. Um, I'll probably buy my own eventually. So I've done the uh, traditional Z-Pinch from my previous videos. Sending high voltage through a coil wrapped around the, uh, the plasma beam. So 
So going through these experiments, I actually found a way to coat anything in copper using a high voltage capacitor bank and a vacuum chamber. Thanks for watching.